In section 3.2, we will start talking about domain and range. Recall that the domain of a rational function is the set of all x values which yield an output or a y value. The domain of, of any function, of a rational function specifically, is a set of all x values which yield a y value or an output. Now recall that dividing by 0 is undefined. So if you take 5 divided by 0 or any number divided by 0, uh, our answer will be undefined. So the domain of a rational function includes all the values of x except those that cause the denominator to equal to 0 because when the denominator equals to 0, this happens, division by 0, and that gives us an undefined value, which means we do not have an output y. In other words, if f of x equals to p over q, then the denominator q cannot be 0. And this is called a restriction on the domain. As an example, let's find the domain of the function f of x equals to x plus 6 over x minus 5 in interval notation. So first, we want to ask ourselves, is there a restriction? In any time we have a rational function, there is a possibility of a restriction because remember our denominator x minus 5, it cannot equal to 0 because if it did, we would have this case where it's division by 0. So what's our restriction? Our restriction is this, that the denominator q, whatever that expression is, cannot equal to 0. So in our case, our denominator is x minus 5 and that cannot have a value of 0 because if it did, we would have division by 0. So if you add 5 to both sides, that means x cannot equal to 5. So to find the restriction of the domain of a rational function, we would take the denominator and set it not equal to 0, because that's what it's not allowed to be. The next step is writing this in interval notation. x cannot equal to 5. So the easiest way to do it, in my opinion, is to have a number line. On one side you have negative infinity, on the other side you have positive infinity. x can be any value we want because any other value except for 5 will yield us a value for f of x, but x cannot be 5. So at x equals 5 we will have a hole in our, our domain. So the domain is a set of all x values from negative infinity to positive 5, and also from positive 5 to infinity. So basically, it's all the values from negative infinity to infinity except for 5. Now here's how we, we were, we were going to write that in interval notation. To the left of 5, we have the set of numbers from negative infinity to positive 5. And to the right of 5, we have the set of numbers from 5 to infinity. And because this is a disjoint set, we're going to uh, use a symbol union uh, to indicate that um, both of these uh, different sets are part of the same solution. So this is our domain. Negative infinity to 5, union 5 to infinity. Let's take a look at another example. Find the domain of the function f of x equals x plus 5 over x squared minus 3x minus 10 in interval notation. Anytime our function is in the form of f of x equals to p over q, which is a rational function, then our restriction is that our denominator q cannot equal to 0 because that would lead to division by 0. So that's what, exactly what we're going to set up we're going to take our denominator, which is x squared minus 3x minus 10, and we're going to say that that denominator, it cannot equal to 0. Because if it did, we would have division by 0. So let's, let's solve this equation. And any quadratic equation, um, you should always try factoring first because it's the easiest method. So we have to find two numbers which multiply to be negative 10, add to be negative 3, and those are going to be negative 5 and positive 2. They multiply to negative 10, add to negative 3, and this cannot equal to 0. So that means x minus 5 cannot equal to 0 
x plus 2 cannot equal to 0. So x cannot be 5, and x cannot be negative 2. Because if x was 5, or if x was negative 2, this expression x squared minus 3x minus 10 would have a 0 denominator. Before we can convert this into interval notation, we have to graph it on a number line. So our x can have any value between negative infinity to infinity except for negative 2 and positive 5. Those will be the holes in our domain. Those are the, are the numbers that are not included. So let's write this in interval notation. We have the set of numbers from negative infinity to negative 2. And then we have a break. We have a hole. Then we have the set of numbers from negative 2 to 5. Then we have a hole. And we also have the set of numbers from 5 to infinity. So in interval notation, we're, we are going to write these as three separate sets and join them with the union sign. So we have negative infinity, comma, negative 2, union, negative 2 to 5 union 5 to infinity. So the first set is all the numbers from negative infinity to negative 2. The second set is the numbers between negative 2 and positive 5. The third set is the numbers from 5 to infinity. And this will be your domain. Next example, find the function uh, domain of the function f of x equals x plus 9 over x squared minus 36 in interval notation. This one we will save for class. In the next example, we will determine domain and range from a graph. So recall that domain is the set of all x values for which the graph exists. And the range is the set of all y values for which the graph exists. So we're always looking at the smallest and largest x values for which the graph exists for the domain, and the smallest and largest y values for which the graph exists for the range. So let's take a look at our graph. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to mark the, the lowest and the highest x values on the graph. So my lowest x value is going to be here. This is positive 1. And my highest x value is going to be here, which is positive 10. So my domain is a set of numbers, or set of x values, between 1 and 10. In interval notation, my domain is going to be 1, 10, which tells me that this graph exists between x equals 1 and x equals 10. If you look at x equals 11, the graph doesn't exist. If you look at x equals 0, the graph doesn't exist. So the graph only exists for the x values between positive 1 and positive 10, which is my domain. Now for the range, we are looking for the set of all y values for which the graph exists. For the domain, we are looking horizontally. For the range, we are looking vertically. So that, this time, I'm going to mark the smallest and largest y values for which the graph exists. So my smallest y value is going to be this one right here. And this y value is negative 2. My largest y value for the graph is going to be this one, which 5, 6, 7, which is going to be positive 7. So my range is the y values for which the graph exists. And the graph only exists for the y values between negative 2 and positive 7. At y equals 8, the graph doesn't exist. At y equals negative 3, the graph does not exist. So my range is going to be the set of numbers from negative 2 to positive 7. And the reason we have brackets 
on all of these is because these are cl uh, closed circles, which means the point is included in our graph, and that is indicated by a bracket. Okay, let's take a look at our next example. We want to find the domain and the range. So the domain is the set of all x values for, for which the graph exists. So let's just focus on the domain. I want to look for the smallest and largest x value for where the graph exists. So my smallest x value, it's there because the graph stops at x equals negative 3. And my largest x value is x equals positive 1. The graph stops at x equals 1. So the graph only exists between x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 1. But notice what's a little bit different here than the previous example. At x equals negative 3, we have an open circle, which means that x equals negative 3 is not part of the graph. The graph goes up to negative 3, gets very close to it, but it does not include negative 3. And whenever we have an open circle, we indicate that using a parenthesis. So our domain is the lowest and highest x value for which the graph exists, and that is going to be parentheses negative 3, comma, highest x value is 1, but on 1 we have a closed circle. So for a closed circle, we are going to use a bracket. For the range, we are looking for the smallest and largest y values for which the graph exists. So my smallest y value is going to be this one, which is y equals negative 4. And my largest y value is going to be this one, which is y equals to 0. So the graph doesn't exist below negative 4. It doesn't exist at negative 5, negative 6. The graph does not exist above 0. It doesn't exist at 1, 2, etc., etc. So our range is going to be my smallest y value, which is negative 4 and my largest y value, which is 0. Now notice that at 0, we have an open circle. So it makes us think that we might have a parentheses. However, this point right there on the graph, I'm going to take get rid of this, this point is included on the graph. So the y value of 0 is part of the graph. It's not part of the graph here, but it is part of the graph at the point 0, 0. So 0 is included on the graph somewhere. It doesn't matter where it's included, but it is included. So we are going to have a bracket to indicate the closed circle. The next example um, we will go over in class. And we also want to determine if this is a one-to-one -one function. So for a one-to-one -one function, we have to pass both the horizontal and the vertical line tests. So the horizontal line test is passed because every horizontal line sorry, the vertical line test is passed because every vertical line hits the graph only once. So if I draw any vertical line, it's, it's going to hit the graph exactly one time. So the vertical line test is passed, which means it's a function. But the horizontal line test is not passed because if, you, if I draw this horizontal line, it is going to hit the graph twice, which means this y value has two different x values. And for a one-to-one -one function, Every x has to have one y, but, in, but then every y also has to have one x value. So the horizontal line test, this fails. Therefore, this is not one-to-one. -one. OK, so think about the next example, and we will go over this in class. Uh, the next example after that, we will go over this in class as well.